all right guys so good morning again um welcome back to another episode of everything business as was promised i would have i would look at the continuing section five part two all right so let's just get right into it um as you know um section five is done to be tested on the exam and so section five is a very large section so we we're gonna have to do maybe three parts so this is part two hopefully by the end of today um i'll be able to upload part three all right so let's talk continue in the last um in part one we spoke about some factors of production right land and we we spoke about labor and we spoke about capital right we also spoke about migration which would be a part of labor and um stuff like that internal migration external migration now we're going to pick up um the the fourth and final factor of production right and if you haven't checked out my my video right the part one then um a link will be placed right a tile will be placed at the end of this video so you can just go and check out part one so entrepreneurial ability or enterprise is the final um factor of production i remember that when we talk about factor of production we are talking about um the elements that need to be present for production to take place all right so the term is associated with the people who must provide the funding organize the factors of production set the targets to be met and monitor what is being done to ensure that the goals of the organization are achieved all right so look, look at look at enterprise or entrepreneurial ability this way if you have the other four factors of production other three sorry factors of production and you do not have somebody to organize them to bring them together then nothing will happen right and that is where the entrepreneurial ability or the enterprise is needed you need somebody now to be able to organize the other factors of production um, in such a way that it now um, begin to achieve its purpose or achieve the purpose of the organization all right so the entrepreneur must constantly develop strategies to be used to complete all the tasks and to produce fresh ideas and techniques to enhance the growth and development of the organization and then we move on to levels of production and i put there in bracket quantity right because sometimes students can get the levels and the types of production um, mixed up when we talk about levels of production we're talking about the quantity how much right that is what we mean when we say levels of production we have three levels of production right May, namely subsistence domestic and the surplus we're going to look at all three so the subsistent level of production um is the lowest level of production right and remember that when we talk about level we're talking about quantity so the subsistent level in this level of production right it is only there to meet the basic needs of the country in which it takes place right so sufficient is produced only to enable the population to survive but not enough to improve the way of life right and this is this is key subsistent production means producing only enough for yourself and family so it is a small scale production so when we talk about subsistence we're talking about small scale production think about your backyard farming right you know you, you, you're farming in your backyard right and um you are able to you know take care of your, 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 your yourself and your family but you are not able to go to the market and say all right you're going to sell yeah because you don't have enough right so that is subsistence production and then now we have the domestic level right so at the domestic level of production right everything is produced locally that is within the country it involves producing goods and services not just for the individual or the family or even the community but also for the local market so sticking to the backyard farming story say for example now you know you're doing the farming in your backyard and things are going well you're able to satisfy the needs and wants of your family but then you go out and you get a piece of land and you started you start to farm um, farm on a, on a larger scale now you are able to you are ha you have enough right not only now for your family or yourself but you can go to the local market and you can sell this produce right to the local market satisfying local demand that is domestic production and then now we move to the to the next level 
surplus production. Now at this level, um, countries produce mainly for export purposes, right? And this form of production takes place in developed countries such as US, Britain, Germany, also Caribbean countries as well. So that's kind of misleading, right? Also Caribbean countries, right? So using the same backyard farming, now you are able to satisfy the local market with the piece of land that you bought um, to do your farming. Um, you decide that you need to buy some more land. So you buy some more and you are able now to be producing enough for the local market and you still have some left over. That's the surplus. Now what are you going to do with that extra that you have left over? You're going to export it, right? That is surplus production. And now we have types of production now. Types of production, um, and I have in bracket here the stages. So types of production is the same as the stages of production, right? We have three stages or types, primary, secondary, and tertiary, right? Pretty simple. So the primary stage of production is also called the extractive stage, right? The word extractive comes from the word extract, which means to take out. So it goes without saying that the primary, the primary stage of production Right, it is the first stage of production, right, and it is con concerned with extracting raw materials from the land, right. For example, agriculture, mining, fishing, all of these things are primary production, right. So you see those pictures there; they are extracting the raw material from the from the land, right. Then you have secondary manufacturing, secondary production, sorry, right, which is also called manufacturing, right. Um. This level of production, sorry, this type of production um, is concerned with transforming the raw materials into finished goods, right? And it, it consists of manufacturing um, and construction industries. So, for example, assembling, refining, building, all of these would be at the secondary stage of production. So, the secondary stage of production is just really concerned with converting raw materials to finished goods. Then you have the tertiary stage or type of production. Right, tertiary type of production is mainly concerned with services, providing service. So if you are providing a service, any type of service at all, you are operating at the tertiary stage of production, right? For example, marketing, transporting, tourism, right? You can look there, um, your hairdresser, your barber shops, um, your taxi drivers, um, restaurants, when, you, when they serve you the food, right, that would be providing a service. They're operating right there at the tertiary stage of production. A restaurant can, um, in fact, operate at all levels, all stages, rather, of production, right? So, for example, I have a restaurant, right, and the, you know, I have a farm that I operate, right, to provide raw materials for my restaurant that would be primary stage of production um when i when i when i when i get the raw materials prepare the food put the meal together that would be the secondary stage because i am what converting the raw materials to finished goods now the food is prepared and i'm selling this food to people right that is tertiary production so a restaurant is one of those unique businesses that can be involved in all stages of production all right so now we're going to be talking about cottage industry, right? Which is also a part of um, section five. So what is a cottage industry? Very important. So a cottage industry, right? These are small businesses that use traditional, or you can say simple, you don't have to say traditional, you can say simple technology, and are often located in a rural area or at home, right? So if you look at the picture there, you will see, that there are some persons there working to make garments or, you know, make materials or whatever they're making there. But it seems as if these people are at home, they know each other, and, it, you know, they're using simple technology, as you can see from the, this, this picture. So what are some of the characteristics of cottage industries? The first one, they are home-based. They are usually run from home and are a small, you know, small building close to home. So if, if, if not at home, they are in a small building that's close by their home. So they use manual labor, right? And, and if they're using machines, it's going to be small scale and it's not going to be any cutting edge, you know, machines, right? They are domestic in scale. 
They are small scale, as was said earlier. They do not use large amounts of land, labor, or capital, and they have very small volume of production. They often use local raw materials such as clay for pottery, wood, and natural fibers. They use family labor. So most of the work is done by family members and not by paid employees. So what are some of the benefits of cottage industries? Um, they provide employment, right? Obviously, right, you don't have, you don't, you, you, you can't find a job and you have this set of skills that you can make stuff, right? Then you make it and sell it, right? That's a cottage industry, provide employment. People can find work without leaving their home. So there's no need to migrate, right? And then work can be combined with household activities, gardening, or even taking care of your child. And they provide a market for local agricultural and other products, right? You don't need a lot of capital to establish a cottage industry, right? So very small amount of capital is needed. And, you know, if you, if you export your products, which you can do, right, then the country will earn foreign exchange. And then we move on to another type of industry, um, which is what is called linkage or a linkage industry, right? From here, the word linkage, you supposed to know that we're talking about like a, it's like a link, so a connection, right? And the word industry simply means business, you know? So if, we, if, 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 if you can look at the name and tell what this is, is talking about, linkage industry, it's basically businesses that are connected or that are linked to each other. Not true? Very good. So a linkage industry is an industry that gives rise to another. In a linkage industry, one firm produces something which another firm will depend on to carry out their productive activities. So linkage industries are sometimes called spin-offs or screwdriver industries. Right? So we have two types of linkages. We have the forward linkage, we have backward linkage. Right? Now the forward linkage is when one business produces the raw material for another. So for example, a sugar factory has a forward linkage to a business which uses the sugar to make what? Drinks or to make chocolate. Yeah, that's a forward linkage. And then the backward linkage now is when one business depends on another, right, for its raw material. So one business will buy products or raw materials from the other, right, which is its supplier. In other words, when a business depends on one on another for its raw materials. So for example, sugar factory, right, would have a backward linkage to a farm which grows sugarcane. Yeah? Well, most most um sugar factories have backward linkages with their farm. Yeah? Because, you know, they have a farm. So let's look at this example that will help to explain, this diagram rather, that will help to explain forward and backward linkage. So in this case, right, we have Barbados dairy industry, right? Barbados dairy industry is the main industry that we're looking at. Um, they have a backward linkage with dairy farms, right? So Barbados dairy industries you know, would make what? Dairy products, right? They have a backward linkage with dairy farms. You know, that's the farm that would have the, the cows and stuff like that. And also citrus growers, you know, persons who grow fruits, right? So they have a backward linkage. They would need these things in order to make their products. So that is a backward linkage, right? So see, right here, Barbados dairy industries have a backward linkage with dairy farms and citrus growers. Why? Why is the backward linkage? It's because Barbados dairy industries will depend on dairy farmers and citrus growers for their products are, you know, in order to make what they need to make, right? So they'll depend on them for their raw material. Now, they have made what they need to make, right? They, they make their product and now they will now supply supermarkets, hotels and restaurants with their dairy products. And that is a forward linkage to Barbados dairy industry. So it, it depends on the perspective that you're looking at it from now. Because to the supermarkets, they would have a backward linkage with Barbados dairy industry. The hotels and restaurants will have a backward linkage with Barbados dairy industry. While Barbados dairy industry will have a forward linkage uh, with the supermarkets and the hotels and restaurants. Think about it as where the, where the goods are going. So Barbados dairy industry, they are sending their products forward while Barbados dairy industry are depending on the dairy farm and the citrus growers. Okay? All right, hope you got that. 
So let's look at some of the advantages of linkages, right? So linkages provide increased employment and improved standard of living, right? Um, with forward linkage, there is an outlet for the product. You always have an outlet for your product, right? Because you know that these people will always buy your product, yeah? Then linkages will also generate income, right? And where, where there are backward linkages or good backward linkages, then there is no need to import raw material because what? You, you know, you're going to always get um, your supplies from the supplier and this can save on foreign exchange, all right? When we come in the next part, we will look at the small firm, right? So stay tuned for that for part three. As I said, don't want to make the video too long. So see you. Walk good.